Okay, welcome to the phylum Cnidaria. This is the first in the video series for the for this phylum, um, and this phylum is uh, named for its something called nid nidocytes, which are stinging cells. As we all know, these things, jellyfish, hydras, corals, and anemones, sometimes are known for um, being uh, dangerous stingers, like jellyfish, um, box jellyfish, and uh, uh, we've seen how. Uh, if you, you can picture a, a, a clownfish, it lives in its little anemone house and doesn't get stung remarkably, um, but other things do get killed and eaten by these. And that's because of these little cells that they have that are unique to this phylum called nid nidocytes. Um, some nudibranchs can steal and use the nidocytes, but they can't manufacture them for themselves. So we're talking about jellyfish, hydras, corals, and anemones. Here are your learning objectives. You can um, stop the video on this uh, if you like. And let's have a little slideshow of what some of the cnidarians are that we're going to be looking at. Here's a big jellyfish. This is called a lion's mane jellyfish. Um, and there's a little bit of perspective going on. That's probably not bigger than that diver, but it'll be a, oh, a couple. Of, it'll be a meter, meter and a half across. So that's a big, big animal. Here we have a beautiful brain coral. Here's a really big coral head. Okay, and here is an even bigger coral head. Uh, this one's got a nickname, Big Mama. It may be the oldest animal that we know about on the planet. Okay, there's a way that you can date these corals, uh, how old they are. You can age them. When we'll look, have a look at that later on. It's uh, a lot has it's a lot it's very similar to uh, counting the rings on a tree, but a coral head this big, where every single tiny little animal um, on this every little individual of this big coral head is a clone, and that may be a couple of thousand years old. This um, this animal. So that's the largest that that's the largest coral head that we know about, and it's also maybe the oldest animal. Here's a little hydra, um, very common in pretty much any water, uh, uh, any little freshwater and body that you'll find around here. Maybe not um, uh, fast-flowing streams so much as uh, more sedentary water, but um, this one's got a gut full of phytoplankton that it's been eating. Okay, so you can see with all the green. Okay, but it also um, has phytoplankton, or it also has um, uh, little symb symbiotic organisms that are living in its tissue that make uh, food with fin through photosynthesis, and that is also coloring it green. Here's a blue bottle, or Portuguese man of war, and if any of you have ever been stung with a uh, blue bottle. Um, then you you know that they can they can be uh, quite painful. Okay, they wash up on the beaches here in the summer in great quantities sometimes, and they can sting for a couple of days even after they've been uh, laying on the on the beach. So if you ever are around with a kid, make sure that they don't pick them up without some supervision. Um, here is a cup coral. This is one of New Zealand's um, very few. Uh, rocky corals, stony corals, but um, they are all solitary so they don't build reefs like we get in the Great Barrier Reef. Here is a camouflage anemone. You'll see loads of these if you go down and look at the rock pools at Leisure Island. Here's a, a red waratah anemone. Probably I've seen a few of these on the shoreline. Uh, here are the white-sided or white tentacled anemone. Um, this is probably New Zealand's uh, most common uh, shallow water anemone. Um, you can find dense patches of cloned individuals in uh, big aggregations. And uh, if you look, dive down at the down at the entrance, you'll see that there are uh, literally thousands of these. The um, the the entrance bottom at the uh, flat part of the of the channel is just covered with white-sided anemones. It's just a carpet of them. And these things are um, interesting because you know, they can shoot out these little stinging threads when they're um, when they're bothered. And you can go ahead and uh, you find these at Leisure Island at the rock pools or other places. And if you poke at them a little bit, then they'll shoot out these stinging threads. 
Try not to get them on you, uh, on your glove, and then rub your face or anything, though, because they can give you uh, painful stings or itching. And uh, um, we've got one staff member here that breaks out in a horrible rash anytime he's around these things. Okay, here is a wandering anemone. Um, that's about the size of uh, oh, a couple of softballs right next next to each other, laid next to each other. So these ones are, you'll see them with their tentacles extended out at night mostly, but these things can detach and then sort of float around. They're very soft and sort of bubbly. Um, wanders from seaweed to sea, seaweed, and um, they can be highly variable in color. They could be pink, they can be gray, green, brown, orange, but you'll see these things hopefully at um, uh, at Fidianga and also if you dive at Rabbit Island you'll probably see these things. Here's an Arctobedema jellyfish, um, McMurdo Sound, Antarctica. Okay this is backlit, it's not creating its own light, but there are deep water uh, jellyfish and hydrozoan um, uh, planktonic stages that can um, create their own light with symbi uh, symbiotic bacteria. Okay, these are um, coral polyps. All right, and you can see the the mouth and the tentacle. So far, you should have noticed that most everything here has got lots of little tentacles and a little mouth. All right, and this is how the structure of these things are, just like an anemone. But these are coral polyps. Here is a leather coral. Uh, sea whips. This is the kind of thing you'll see if you go uh, to PNG next year, or if you dive in, uh, do any diving in the tropics. Here's what the sea whip polyps look like, and you can remember this will be. The, these are the octocorallians with. Um, whoops. There we go. Let's move that back. Octocorallians that we were talking about because they all have eight tentacles. Okay. Here's a freshwater jellyfish. Um, these things bloom in great numbers in the lakes in Rotorua at a certain time of the year. They're very, very small. Most people would never ever notice them. And they don't sting. They probably came over from China in um, in some sort of aquarium water. Okay, here's a sea pen. Um, these are another octocorallian, a soft coral, and these ones are uh, very common down in uh, the sounds in Fjordland and lots of people pay big money to go down and uh, dive along the uh, areas where there are lots of sea pens. They're little filter feeders. Okay, here's a big jellyfish. This, uh, These things can be four or five meter long tentacles. They can have four or five meter long tentacles and they bloom in huge numbers around this area in the uh, springtime. Around November we'll get um, densities of one almost every couple of cubic meters in the in the harbor and in the near shore waters. Uh, they don't really sting too badly. They uh, they'll make your lips if you've been diving with them. They might make your lips feel like you've been eating hot sauce, but that's about it. Here's a mushroom coral, Nemo's house. Another leather coral, finger leather coral. Okay, so let's talk about some of the general characteristics of phylum Cnidaria got a very simple body structure, more complex than sponges though. Okay, so uh, the sponges only had two layers and um, the, and the, um, uh, what was this, but the panacoderm and the coanoderm. And the cnidarians also have two layers, uh, but they have, unlike the sponges, in which you could take any cell out of the uh, sponge itself and it could live independently which is called totipotency where all the cells can live independently uh, for review. Um, these ones are composed of many cells that cannot live individually and they have interconnections including a neural net um, which means that um, since they make up, since the cells work together, are not independent of each other, and not, and they are inter interdependent on each other, they can't survive on their own. This is what we call a tissue. So this is the first phylum that we see where tissues have arisen. So you know, we're, again, we're we're going to be going through most of these phyla in the order of complexity, um, as 
uh, in, a, in a sort of evolutionary pathway, we're going to be looking at increasing complexity. And so these animals are a bit more complex than sponges. And one of the first things that makes them more complex is that they have uh, tissues. Other things include things like a um, neural net, muscle fibers, and um, uh, well, more uh, items that we'll get on in, into as these uh, lecture series go. Okay, hydroids, jellyfish, anemones, and corals. Sea pens, other things. Okay. There are two main morphological forms. Morpho, meaning shape. Okay, so two main shapes, okay, morphological forms. Every time you see morph, it's going to be talking about the shape, the way something's structured. So that's a good root to know, root word to know right here. If we even highlight that, morph or morpho, okay. So try to remember that one. Morph means shape. Um, polyp, the polyp form is the type that is sitting on the bottom, attached to something, could be attached even to, it doesn't have to be on the bottom, it could be attached to uh, any substrate really, it could be attached to a kelp frond, or it could be attached to a floating um, bit of debris out in the open ocean. Okay, that would be a polyp, and then, which is sessile, and sessile means um, essentially stationary, sitting upon. Okay, and then you have the medusa, which is our classic jellyfish. All right. And uh, if you know the story of the Medusa, that was the woman, the um, woman from Greek mythology that had the snake hair, and she could turn you to a stone. But if you looked at her, so um, they've got a lot of tentacles, and uh, so similar to the snakes, that can uh, even the tentacles can move around a little bit. So the Medusa is the free-swimming jellyfish form of Cnidarians, and they may actually go back and forth in different parts of their life cycle between the polyp and the medusa. All right, so let's have a bit of a closer look. All right, so we will be looking at the structure of this of the Cnidarian body form and learning a bit. This is like that um that diagram in periphera where I said if you can learn this diagram, you're 90% of the way towards knowing uh, how sponges work, and of course knowing what all the labels mean. All right, but um, uh, we can go. Th we'll be going through this diagram in class. This is a very important diagram and something you should be very familiar with by the end of the uh, lecture series. Okay, now we'll skip this one right now, save this one till class, and go to this lecture right here or this, sorry, this slide right here. And this shows the general body form of cnidarians, pretty much all cnidarians. You have a polyp, which is something attached, okay? And this is your classic anemone shape, and then your medusa, which is your classic jellyfish. All right. So going through all the body parts that you need, Actually, in fact, we should probably go to this this diagram. We can re -go, we'll go through it again in class, but um, I'll talk about this uh, right now for a little bit. Okay, so if you imagine this body form as the same in all of your cnidarians, there you have essentially a cavity, which is a gut. All right and then it's surrounded by an outer tissue layer and an inner tissue layer. So there's one layer on the inside, one layer on the outside, one layer on the inside, sorry, the inside right here, one layer on the outside. So you can almost think of it as putting one bag inside of another bag. So I like to think of a cnidarian body form as a bag within a bag. Okay, so if we remember um, the term for layer, what was the term for layer? That's right, derm. Okay, so if you think about what the inner layer is, okay, the inner derm, the term for that is endoderm. 
E N D O derm, endoderm. But another term for it, since it lines this area, which is called the gut or stomach or gastrovascular cavity, this can also be called gastroderm, G A S T R O D E R M. Gastroderm. The gastroderm or endoderm is the inner bag. Then you have an outer um, layer, protective layer, okay, and that is called the epiderm. Epi means on top of, so you could so you could fill in in this area, E P I, derm layer, top layer, on top of layer. Okay, so there's there you have it, your epiderm and your endoderm. Okay, and then, but if you picked up a uh, jellyfish, then you know that there's a, a little bit more to it than just two thin tissue layers. Okay, these are only a few cells thick, and so they're very, very thin, and obviously that would just fall apart if there was nothing, no more to it. But inside it, just like we had the mesohyle in sponges, we have what's called mesoglia. Meso for middle. And then mesoglia, so M E S O G L E A, you can fill in right here. Mesoglia, and that is a proteinaceous jelly, uh, which is aptly named jellyfish. Okay, these things are, are quite um, flexible and uh, soft, uh, but with a little bit of firmness to them, with uh, as. Um, some of them, uh, where we, when we used to be out in the surf in North Carolina, we could pick up these little ones called cannonball jellyfish and throw them at each other. So they're strong enough to hold together. But that's because of this mesoglia on the inside. Okay. And then, um, of course, we have the tentacles right here. So all these little tentacles. You can put tentacles in right here. And this part called the mouth. Is, or this part, the mouth is called the manubrium, M-A-N-U-B-R-I-U-M, manubrium. So you can fill that in there. Okay. So we have now only a couple other little bits to uh, fill in, a couple of lines to fill in, and we have what's this structure here, just pertaining to jellyfish. Okay, is the what's known as an umbrella. Okay, for jellyfish, the this this bell, that's called a bell or an umbrella, and so this is the X umbrella side, X E X on top of X umbrella side, and this is the sub umbrella side, S U B U M B R E L L A R, sub umbrella side, or sub umbrella. And you can imagine that this is like, if you had a big stick on it, that this would look like uh, an umbrella, and you'd be on the bottom side of it here, sub, under, umbrella. Okay. All right, another um, way to remember this uh, is this is also called the dorsal side, just like the dorsal fin, the top part, and the ventral, V-E-N-T-R-A-L, just like it had with fish, ventral side of the jellyfish. And just in the interest of uh, of this file not getting too large, we'll stop this um, right here and continue on uh, Nidarian's the second vid.